Hello, everyone. Welcome to my assignment five of light color composition in film. Film number one I'd like to talk about is a scene from Godzilla, King of the Monsters, which was created in 2018. And the scene is the Arctic face off. In this scene, we saw King Ghidorah be awoken and Godzilla shows up and they end up fighting. This is tell you what it's about. The lighting during this scene is low, and the source is from a large snowstorm, which primarily makes the colors black, blue, and white, and a few shades of gray. And every now and then we see bolts of lightning go across the sky, which highlights the scene in just a flash. Adding an effect like this into a film is common to make CGI effects look more real and convincing. And in this case, it's the two giant monsters, which is Godzilla and Ghidorah. This level of lighting and adding an effect makes them look more real. Other sources of light come from the human perspective, which is from sparks within the plane and the flashing and blinking lights and explosions and fire as the scene goes from one to another throughout it. <clears throat> the colors that stand out the most come from Godzilla's blue, blue glow and atomic breath, and from Ghidorah's yellow glow and lightning breath. Both light up the scene and grab the viewer's attention. And for anybody who knows either of these characters, they can pretty much anticipate what's going to happen. And not only that, the way that the light moves from their chest or their back to their mouths helps new members of the audience to predict what's going to happen. <laughs> However, the colors have a meaning and are shown throughout the rest of the film. To explain more on that, Godzilla's blue glow is symbolic to what he represents, and that is balance, order, and being the alpha. Ghidorah's yellow glow represents an invasive threat that brings chaos and destruction, both which oppose one another and are pretty much highlighted throughout this first scene where they clash and throughout the rest of the film. <clears throat> the next film is from Jaws, 1975, and the scene I would like to review is the underwater cage part. <clears throat> Our primary light source in this scene comes from the sun during a bright sunny day out at sea, where the light is shining downwards. Most of the scene is underwater, and by going underwater, it negates a great amount of the light, giving us a more darkened environment in scene. The light highlights from Dr. Matt Hopper's face are primarily seen through his eyes and through a scuba mask, which in many different shots show a, sh a look of shock and terror just by reading his eyes and giving them light to it. Not only that, other odd angles, primarily looking upwards, we see light coming down and gives the shark more of a shadowy and silhouetted like appearance. <clears throat> and the reason why I believe was to make the shark appear more like a real shark because we all know it's like an animatronic and at times robotic. This is to primarily help it to look more real. Other parts of the film, other parts of the scene would be the yellow barrels, which give the characters and the audience an idea as to where the shark is located. And this helps because yellow barrels in a blue ocean, they stand out. Not only that, underwater, the colors are blue and dark blue, primarily in like a scene like this, which gives us a feeling of being in another world and in a world where it's pretty scary, which adds fear to the scene and a feeling to the audience. The shots where the shark attacks the cage, we see Matt, we see, I mean, I'm sorry, we see white in the form of air bubbles, which are escaping from Matt's tank, which tells us in Matt's situation, he's breathing very heavily and it's out of terror because the shark is tearing through the cage. Another shot we see where Matt is doing what he can to fight, 
back by stabbing the shark. And from it, we can see blood escaping from the wounds that he inflicts as the blood flows through into the water. <clears throat> All this right here with the lack of amount of light and just enough to see things such as the air bubbles, blood, and not only that, seeing yell on the surface to be able to know where the shark is, gives us a feeling of that they're combating a creature that has to be taken out, but unfortunately they're doing it within its environment, which adds terror and feeling like a fish on a hook. And that right there, I think I pretty much sums up everything I wanted to discuss about this. Hope you all enjoyed. <laughs>